Hello, high school basketball fans, and welcome to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium, where this evening it's the 9-0 Ottawa Glandorf Lady Titans versus the 9-0 Crestview Lady Knights. That's a little post Christmas treat. I'm Dave Bowen, and joining me tonight for color commentary is the impeccable Jerry Snodgrass. At this time, our starting lineups are being announced, and we will share starters with you at this time as well. For Ottawa Glandor, starting at guard, a sophomore, the leading scorer for OG, Carson Erford. Also starting for and they turn the lights out on yeah, me, Jerry. we may have to wait on this one. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Also starting for Otto, Otto Glendorf, Carly Brinkman, a 5'7 junior guard. Katie Kaufman, a sophomore, 6'1 post player, second leading scorer at 12 points per game. And then Micah Aldrich, a 5'9 senior forward, averages five points a game and completing the lineup for OG, a 5'10 junior forward, Caitlin Kimmett, number 32. For Mark Gregory's Crestview Lady Knights, it'll be Maya Epsler, a 6'2 senior post player, averages eight points per game. Casey Gregory, a 5'4 freshman guard, averages 10 points per game. Game. Ellie Klein, the starting point guard for the Knights, averages 11 points per game, the second leading scorer for Crestview. And then Callie Gregory, the leading scorer for the Lady Knights, a senior at 5'10", averages 16 points per game. She wears number five, completing the starting lineup for Crestview. Number 21, junior Josie Kowick Kowicki, a 5'5 guard. Jerry, great to have you here this evening. Two 9-0 teams. It's going to be really exciting. Yes, it is. You know, I took the fall off, so it's good to be back in the seat again here doing this. But at the same time, boy, did I have this one circled. You Absolutely. Know, two great teams and really two great programs. That's two. what's going to make this interesting. Yep, Troy Yant and Mark Gregory both have been at the helm for quite a while. Troy Yant, 12th year. Mark Gregory, 8th year. OG with the ball to begin with, and they go inside right away and hit the offensive glass. Rebounding is a key, but unable to score. There's the Titans that get out and transition to the Knights. Cal Casey Gregory with the miss. Nice rebound there by Micah Aldridge. She and brings I, the ball across. Yeah, and I really think we're going to see OG try to speed it up, try to get easy baskets. But again, you know, they're trying to dominate that inside every single time coming down so far. Ball's going inside. Yep, going inside again. That's... Katie Kaufman against Maya Etzler. They come up, come away empty. Crespi pushing the basketball, looking to attack. And that's going to be an over and back turnover on the mishandle. The only positive for that, Jerry, it's a dead ball turnover. Crestview can set their defense. Yes, and you know what? Two possessions right now for OG, but I give Maya Etzler a lot of credit. She's holding her own on the inside. Yeah, I think Coach Gant wants to go right at her, try and get her in foul yep. trouble. Crestview does have some backup post players, but the senior, Maya Epsler, one of the starters and leaders for Crestview in the interior. OG with the basketball on the right wing. That is Carly Brinkman, kicks it out. Here comes Aldridge, she shoots it, overcooks it. Offensive rebound again for Carson Erford. And I believe again. that's her third or fourth offensive rebound. Correct, yes. The Titan, Lady Titans have hit the offensive glass. They come up empty. Callie Gregory gives it to the point guard, Ellie Klein. Casey Gregory going to run the point now. Different look for the Lady Knights. Probably a set they've worked on. That gets Callie Gregory open. She shoots it from the elbow. Doesn't come away with it. Nice defensive rebound by Carson Erford. Here come the Lady Titans. You know, I think it was Callie, was it Callie Gregory that shot that? Yes. She's got a nice looking shot. Absolutely. There's another offensive rebound as Carson Erford picks up the first field goal of the game for either team. Two minutes in, OG with her patented pressure. Crestview breaks it. Callie Gregory, she scored 27 points as a sophomore, 24 last year against OG. The team split those two contests. Klein called for traveling there. So this is the rubber match. This is the third meeting between the two schools. And that's what I like, you know, two programs that are very, very storied, very, very good, and not afraid to play each other. Not afraid to play each other. And Crestview shows 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. How do you fight pressure? You fight pressure with pressure. Well, and especially a 2-2-1, two, two, you know, that will slow things down a little bit. You know, it's like one of those presses. We used to call it a sooner or later we're going to get you. You know, you let them 
let them make the mistake. It's not that pressing, trapping up front uh, uh, pressure. Carly Brinkman with the penetration against Ellie Klein. Again, gets her rebound, but Klein comes away with it. And then there's contact. We have our first whistle of the game. And that foul is going to go against number 14, Savannah Record. That's her first, team's first. Good time to introduce our officials, Doug Etzler, Les Hockenberry, and Braden Sauter blowing the whistle at tonight's contest. A real good crew. Yes, it is. And good thing they're needed on a game like this. Yep. Callie Gregory with the ball out front. Back cut to Ellie Klein with the left hand, fundamentally sound, and Ellie Klein gets the bucket. Give Callie Gregory the dime. 2-2 here in the early going. And that's how you take care of that pressure. Yep. Exploit the defense when they really want to take away the passing lanes. Look for the back door. You're right, Jerry. Crestview executes it to perfection. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is the Carriot. Stop by the Carriot in Ottawa for great food and great friends. Good luck, Lady Titans, from the Belmonts. So OG with the basketball. Micah Aldridge over to Carson Erford. Little fumble there, but here comes Brinkman. She attacks the rack with authority. And a nice job attacking the rim there by Kitty Kaufman. And a storyline right there as Maya Etzler picks up the personal, her first, Crestview's first. That's going to send Kaufman to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line to shoot two. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Hope style happens here. You know, again, you know, offensive rebounding by Ottawa Glandorf and also going inside. That's something that, you know, down the road could play a factor. So Kaufman goes one for two from the free throw line. You're right, Jerry, the offensive boards. Coach Gregory's got to attack that. Callie Gregory with the step back just a little bit short. Nice defensive rebound by Carly Brinkman. Here comes Erford attacking the rim. With the miss, Callie Gregory affects it. Maya Etzler with the rebound. Ellie Klein, Crespi looking to attack offensively. And there's another steal, a light ball turnover. Here comes Brinkman. She's been a water bug here in the early going. There's the offensive yep. rebound again by Katie Kaufman there to clean it up. OG with the three-point lead halfway through the first canto. Casey. You know, when you're big like that on the interior and you have the athletic ability, you know, you can shoot the ball a lot. You know, you're counting on your bigs to get those boards. And again, in transition, just makes it that much tougher. Coach Gregory has brought Kennedy Kreider into the basketball game to help negate some of that height and maybe help with rebounding. There's a steal again. And... She went down. She yep. landed. She Casey hit her Gregory head pretty hard. Hit her head. Looks like she's going to be okay. And Coach Gregory is going to take her out, rotate in Josie Kowicki, and Haley McCoy sees her first action of the contest. So here in the early going, a big possession both ways, a five to two score. Crestview has got to maintain defensive discipline and really work better on the defensive glass. And you know, too, some of that comes from the penetration. You, know, you no. do that, <laughs> yeah. if you're out of Atlanta, if that's exactly what you need. Carly Brinkman with the three-pointer. Nothing but cotton. And again, she's she's been all over the place here in the early going with the basketball and dribble penetration. And then right there, splashes a three. Crestview's got a counter. This is where you look for your senior, Callie Gregor. She's got it looking to attack. Good help side defense, rotation, pack line defense, but the foul's going to be called on Carly Brinkman. That's her first, OG second. But yeah, teaching that shell defense, Jerry, we're seeing it on display by sure OG are. right here. Great help side defense, and I know she thought she got all ball on that. Um, of course, she would think that, but uh, at the same time, she did get her on the body. 
There's a nice play, some contact right there, under, under out of bounds action. Always love to see coaches run those sets to score under out of bounds. And Maya Etzler is going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line where she will shoot two. The foul is on Katie Coppin. That's her first. OG's third. I think that's something over the last few years you've really seen, you know, coaches take advantage of out, out of bounds plays. You know, we call them slobs and blobs, you know, baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds. But coaches have really used those as a real offensive possession, not just getting the ball in bounds. And Agreed. I think that's that's so important. So my answer goes two for two from the free throw line. She's a 71% free throw shooter. Cuts the lead in half, eight to four. Erford with the ball, thinks about it, kicks it out, and they go inside, and Kaufman attacks the glass. Nice drop set, step, and score, Jerry. And they're going to keep doing that. You know, she had help on the backside, but didn't matter. She's just strong enough to power it up. The 6'1 junior post player, or excuse me, senior, senior. post player, yeah, Katie Kaufman. Watched her play last year, and Thought she had, oh, she was just going to get better and better. And she has. Yep. Crestview with the basketball. Callie Gregory again looking to get inside. Off the dribble, off the window, kiss it and count it for Callie Gregory. Picks up her first bucket of the game. 10 6 on the carry it scoreboard in favor of the Lady Titans. They work the ball from side to side. Always good when you're moving the ball around the perimeter. Don't let it stick. Erford looks to penetrate to the right, does so. Nice defense by Josie Kowicki and Crestview. Kennedy Kreider limits him to one shot with the defensive board. Callie Gregory from sister Casey overcooks it, but we have a foul on the floor, and that's going to be on Katie Kaufman, I believe, Jerry. Yes. And that's going to be her second, so a storyline develops here. You know, we go back to that last offensive possession by Ottawa Glandorf. Talk about good ball movement. And I think sometimes that's overlooked, you know, by fans and things like that, how critical moving the ball is from side to side. You know, you hear people talk about less dribble, more passes. Well, that's what, it's not just pass to an open guy, it's to reverse the ball and get a lot of uh, people out of position yeah, on the defensive end. Yeah, area. get the defense working, get them out of position, and pass up a good shot for a great shot. You with know, you that have, ball yeah, reversal. You have somebody fronting somebody on the front side. Great drive that time. Yeah, that's Kate, Casey Gregory, the freshman. She can be a bulldog. Shows it right there. But there's a lot of Lady Titans out there with the same mentality as they look to penetrate off of the transition. Crestview defensive. There's penetration now off the curl cut. Missed by Micah Aldrich. And loose ball. It's going to go out of bounds and stay with OG. Really good hustle that time by Carly Brinkman. That was headed out of bounds, and she was able to tip it in and put it off of Crestview's, uh, Crestview player's leg. Yeah, I'm very impressed with her. Again, I call it the uh, maximum role player, the MRP, and Brinkman is doing a lot of those little things here in the early going that may not show up on the stat sheet, but gives her team an opportunity to put the ball in the basket via extended possessions or just great defense. You know, she epitomizes, too, I will say this, that I had a lot of their soccer games a year ago, and she was an all-WBL player a year ago and this year, too. And that multiple sport, you know, knows how to compete, knows how to play. And you really see that in her. Brinkman with the miss. Crestview with the rebound. Callie Gregor again. Everybody on the OG squad paying attention to her. They deflected away, and we have a foul on Crestview's number 10. That's Haley McCoy, her first. Just the team's second here in the first quarter. Well, and that was that was another good example of great help side defense that yep. time, too. Mm -hmm. So 28 seconds and counting as we see what OG wants to do with it. Look to score, look to hold it for a final shot. Down to 15. At this point in time, I think you do look to go with the last shot of the quarter. See if you can take momentum into the quarter break. There's a corner three by 
Great, great box out that go. time. Yep. Great box out by Crestview. One second. Callie Gregor, does she get it off in time? She doesn't. Doesn't go. That's going to bring an end to our first quarter on the carry and scoreboard. Your first quarter score. Crestview 8, OG 10. You're watching it all on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School and the Ray Edsler Gymnasium. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So we have our carry scoreboard sponsor, and Jerry would also like to throw out a trivia question sponsored by carry -It. What year was the inaugural girls OHSAA basketball tourney held and the Crestview Lady Knights played in the state final four that year? Okay, I'm not going to look at any of the banners when I say this. <laughs> okay. I, I'm going to say first year for girls basketball state tournament OHSAA. And I'm style. not looking at any banners. 77? You're real, real close. Real close. Look, we'll see if... Let our viewers think about it a little bit as well. 10 to 8, OG with the lead, Crestview with the basketball. That's Casey Gregory. Over to Josie Kowicki, a flare screen, now going into Maya Epsler. She's looking to attack the OG defense, and Caitlin Kimmett kicks it back out. Ellie Klein, she penetrates, she gets to the dish. Doesn't score, but she draws the foul on Carly Brinkman, and that is her second, Jerry. Well, you know, and that was the first time that we saw really kind of a clear lane driving to the basket. Now, granted, she got fouled, but she got fouled from behind or the side where the help defense wasn't there. But all of that came from moving the basketball from one side of the floor to the other, and you get people out of position that way. It's hard when you're playing help side defense to go back and forth continually. Kelly Klein on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Again, locations in Lima, Wapak, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. I've been to three of the four, Jerry. i got to get to that St. Mary's location. Oh, yes, that's true. And Ellie Klein makes both free throws. We're not at a 10 here in the early going of the second quarter. Both teams 9-0, 2-0 in conference action. Getting exactly what we expected. Two outstanding programs. And nice curl cut there again by OG. Defended nicely. And it's going to go off of OG. But it looks like our officials I are going to get probably, together. Yep. yep. A nice piece of officiating, yep. Yep. working together. And that is his call. The person, you know, the person that made that, to overrule that, that is his angled call there. And that's great communication by officials. So OG has the ball under out of bounds. That's Erford looking to penetrate hard left, and she does so and draws contact. And that personal foul is on Crestview's Josie Kwicki, her first, team's first in here in the second quarter. That's going to send Carson Erford, the leading scorer for the Lady Titans. She has two points thus far to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. Nothing but the bottom of the net on the first one. So yeah, Crestview played in that inaugural OHSAA State Tournament Final Four, lost to Frank Fernandina. Now I may be off and I hope our OG fans are, are kind to me if I am, but I did the research and look, but I think the T Lady Titans, their first Final Four where they finished a state runner up under Coach Yant was in 2015. And we talked about that and that was kind of surprising. Yeah. You know, I, I, yeah. I so, would have thought, you know, 1900 and they've been there every year since. You know? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Good help defense by Crestview forces the turnover on Caitlin Kimmick. If you're OG, I, I think uh, Crestview's defense kind of frustrates you a little bit. You know, they're doing a good job of helping, you know, and collapsing when the ball does go inside. And that's, you know, they're used to running the floor pretty well. And 
That's frustrating at times. Yeah. But that tests you as a good team. The tempo of the game right now, even though Crestview's looking to attack and transition when it presents itself, it's more of a half-court game, and that favors right. Crestview. Here comes Erford. She's going to stop and pop from 13. Doesn't go. Maya Etzler with the board. Ellie Klein bringing it across the timeline. And, and that was a great job. I want to point that out by Josie uh, Kowicki that stood there, your hands up, didn't, you know, lunge at the ball. And made, made that's a tough shot to hit when you're doing that. Etzler to Gregory, and there's contact. She looked to go up for a shot and then looked to pass because she was underneath the backboard. But she draws enough contact to pick up the personal on Micah Aldrich, that's her first. We're going to look at some of the stats there with Crestview stats and OG stats from the first quarter. Yep, uh, Crestview, uh, three of nine from two point range, you know, 33%. Free throws, they were two for two for 100%. Five turnovers, though, and that, that was costly. I think a lot of that was due to the great help side defense by OG. And uh, eight, eight rebounds right now, so. Defensive rebounds for the Knights. And you're right, Crestview had five turnovers, but they haven't been live ball where OG's been able to get layups right. off of it. OG was 20% from the floor in the first quarter. Three for 15 from two, one for one from three, one for two from the free throw line. Crestview works the ball around, and Callie Gregory picks up her second field goal of the game, making it 12 to 12. OG did have six offensive boards there in the first quarter as they play volleyball on the backboard, but unable to convert on that wide open look. Here comes Callie Gregory. She's looking to go the distance, draws contact, doesn't get it to go, but she's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line as a result as Caitlin Kimmett picks up the first. I really like the way Callie uh, Gregory plays. She plays hard, she plays fast, she plays under control. Very good right and left-handed both. Comes away empty on that first free throw. She is second on this team at 81% from the charity strike. Going to go to St. Francis and play college basketball. Nails the second one. She doesn't go right up to that line. I'm just going to say, very interesting to see her positioning uh, from the free throw line, especially if she's an 81% shooter. Burford with the basketball, picks up her dribble. They go back door, and they're going to get the uncontested layup. Nicely done as Savannah Record picks up the field goal, give Erford the assist, and that's where, as we saw it at this end, the help side defense was not present yeah. as Crespi was trying to deny, and they were... And, OG was able to get the uncontested layup as a result. OG had everybody out on the perimeter, and there was nobody on that backside. Ellie Klein with the basketball out top. Probing. Sees something, but what she sees isn't theirs. So it's deflected. OG with the turnover. But even here, you know, it's so critical that they're, they're stopping that break. They're getting back, stopping the basketball, and not giving anything easy on those turnovers. You know, that, you know, sometimes look at the game and the course of the game and how many points off turnovers. And that can really, really kill you uh, if you're turning the ball over. Right now, Crestview has weathered that. Yeah, and there, there are two programs in our area where I, I think about how they can score in bunches like this uh, because they force those turnovers. It's OG boys and girls, and then Wayne Trace boys. Yes. <laughs> You, you can think you're down three, and then the next thing you look up the clock, you're down 13. Right. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We're going to take one as well. Again, it's a Donnybrook between two undefeated teams, and you're watching it here on WOSN. The WSN Scores app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. Coach, you said 1977 for the first OHSAA State Girls Tournament. 1976. I'll be done. 1976. Be Before that, girls sports was called part of the uh, uh, GAA. GAA. Yep. Girls can, Athletic Association. Yep. I yep. can still see and and uh, I think during that time also six players on the uh, court. Okay. During the GAA. All right. The Iowa did that for so many they years. Did. Yes. Yeah. 
And there's a held ball tie-up on the under out of bounds. 77 was my first year of coaching. I'm aging myself a little bit, but at the same time, you know, I, I that's why I was thinking it was that year because I knew there was a state tournament that year. Okay. Yep. That's, and I will say this, how far women's basketball Correct. has come. Yes. I can remember in 76, I was right around 9, 10 years old, and I was listening to the Lady Knights on the radio on the living room floor. Sort of like Shooter, but not like Shooter and Hoosiers listening to it on the old Philco, you know? <laughs> now, wait a minute. In 76, you were how old? 9 or 10. Oh, yeah. 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 I just got done saying that was my first year of coaching the next year. <laughs> well, I started coaching when I was 11. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, I'm with you. Hmm. The boys' state tournament, any idea when that started? Oh, I should really know that. <laughs> I, I think I have programs from every year. Okay. I, I mean, not that far back, but... Uh, oddly enough, I have a lot of video of it. Uh, we used to have those at the OHSA. Surprisingly, you could buy them. And uh, I'm not sure. It'd have to be in the it'd be in the 20s, I would you think. Were, you were you are on it. Think about it a little bit here. We'll come back to that. We appreciate Carrie being our scoreboard sponsor and our impromptu trivia sponsor as well. And if it was in the 20s, I'm not going to tell you that I was <laughs> 9 or 10 <laughs> watching it on the Phil Co. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Carson Erford picks up the personal. That's her first, team's fourth. Casey Gregory at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Picks up one of two. And we're all knotted up at 14, halfway through the second quarter. You're right, it's a half-court game, and OG's looking to execute in their half-court offense. Erford with the basketball. Looking to pull Kawicki away and penetrate Bayer, unable to do so. Yeah, look how spread out OG is yeah, right now. Yeah, five out. And here comes Erford with the penetration. And we're going to have a foul called. Just they, so tough. Yeah, they were either going to look for a drive, you know, and clear it out, or a back door like they did earlier. Casey Gregory picks up the personal. That's her first. Crestview's, Crestview's third of the quarter. Carson Erford shooting two from, again, our... Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. Comes up empty on the first one, one for three. She is the leading free throw shooter for OG at 80%, so uncharacteristic right now for her to be one of three. I'm gonna bank that she's gonna make this one, Jerry. Yeah, she had a career high 19 a couple weeks ago against Ottaville. Um, oh, excuse me, against uh, Toledo Christian, I believe it was. She now has four points in this one. Crestview with the basketball. Casey, the sister, Callie. Callie brings it across the timeline. Looking to go one-on-one. Goes to her right, being guarded by Caitlin Kimmett. I'm able to do anything with it. Good defense by Kimmett. Ellie Klein, she attacks the rack. No help side defense. She yeah. gets to the window and scores. And they took advantage of that because they weren't going to leave uh, Callie alone out on that wing, so there was no help side on that side. That's great coaching by Mark Gregory. Great coaching, and you understand why Coach Gantz not going to leave Callie Gregory, the leading scorer for the Lady Knights, and Ellie Klein takes advantage of the opportunity. Crestview with a one-point lead, 16-15. to 15. Here comes Erford again. Ah, she says, whatever you can do, I can do as well. Stops and pops from the free throw line. Erford warming up. Yeah, that's, that was a good move, too, mm -hmm. you know, just straight up, you know, got, got her on her heels. Casey Gregory, the freshman, looks to penetrate. Here comes Klein again, fumbles, stumbles, but gathers it and scores it. Give Klein the bucket, give Casey Gregory the assist. And the same thing. They were out tight on Callie Gregory and not giving, you know, opened up the lane. All you need is a step. OG with the basketball. A good fundamental basketball by both teams. There's penetration, trying to draw the charge. Casey Gregory does not get there in time as Olivia Grothaus penetrates that right, right baseline. That's the second personal on Casey Gregory. Crestview with one player with two, and Casey, OG with two, with Brinkman and Kaufman with two fouls here. A little late Christmas present here. After the day we celebrate. Yep. 
Nice penetration on the curl cut. Olivia Grothaus picks up her first field goal. OG back in front by one. Coach Gregory calls it out, 41. Looks like they're trying to go four out, one in, with Maya Etzler in the post. Callie Gregory with the basketball. Goes into Etzler. And they're going to call three seconds as Maya oh. Etzler was standing there. Yeah, she was. Had her heel, I yeah. think. Tough call, but a real, the right call. Yeah, you don't see three-second called very often. I think in a situation that the ball would have been passed to her, right. the official wouldn't have called it necessarily. And now we have, okay, the, I think the clock didn't start right away. And our official making sure everybody's on the same page. And, you know, they talk about the shot clock in high school basketball, Jerry. Yeah. And I have an opinion about that. And I think you're putting a lot of pressure on someone at the scores table. You sure? Oh, and oh, yes, you are. I mean, we are. see every one out of three or four college games get stopped because they've got to go to the monitor because right. something happened with the shot clock. There's a five-second call. It's Josie Kowicki guards Carson Erford. That's the second time that Josie Kowicki, just a great fundamental, just kept her ground, didn't reach, didn't jab at her. Yep. It's a five-second call as a result of it. Yep, in the early going, I'm going with Kowicki as my MRP for Crestview, maximum role player, and Brinkman for OG. There's a nice screen. Kennedy Kreider with the screen. I believe Maya Essler tossed that one in to Callie Gregory. She gets the uncontested look. And you know, Dave, I, I think every bit of this, the success right now that Crestview is having, I think all stems from the defensive end. Because not the steals, but just by slowing them down and making it their style of game. I couldn't agree with you more right now. Coach Gregory's got to be very pleased as well. They've done a better job in the second quarter of limiting OG to one shot as we see it right there. Callie Gregory looking to go coast to coast, unable to come up with it, but Kennedy Kreider does. So Crestview keeps the basketball. Maya Etzler from Kreider, miss, back up with her own board, and she scores it. Maya Etzler picks up her first field goal, third and fourth point overall. You know, too, I'm sure Coach Yant would like to take a timeout right now, but he's only got 20 seconds left here in the half, so let's play it out, see if we can get a bucket here at the end. Take that momentum into halftime. And there you're going to have a foul off the ball. It's Jesse Kowicki and Erford were battling in there. Kowicki bodying her out. And they usually teach you, you know, as long as you're pushing with your body and not your hands, you're not going to get that call. But... Carson's neck snapped it a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> you can see why the foul was called. Well, and th this is where we're going to see, you know, now, you know, you're getting two free throws. Yep. Yep. Not a fan of it. I, I hate that the uh, one and one, the bonus is going by the way of the dinosaur. It's, a, it's extinct. Uh, but Erford goes to the league's famous recipe chicken free throw line and makes that first one. Where she is now three for four from the free throw line and make it four for five. The 80% free throw shooter showing how it's done now. If they stop Crestview here, those are two big free throws for them. Crestview with the one point lead in the hands of Callie Gregory. Don't know that we'll see her give it up. Down to four, three. She goes behind the back with a dribble. Goes up with it. Not going to score it at the buzzer. A great first half here at Crestview High School at the Ray Enslow Gymnasium. Your score on the carry it in Ottawa scoreboard. Crestview 22, OG 21. We'll be back with some halftime statistics and thoughts. You're watching it all on WOSN. to Crestview High School in the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. It's halftime, and we got a dandy. It's Crestview 22, Ottawa Glendorf 21 on the Carriot scoreboard. Stop by the Carriot in Ottawa for great food and great friends. Good luck, Lady Titans from the Bellmans. Something's got to give. Two undefeated teams. OG on a six-game road-winning streak. Crestview on a six-game home-winning streak. 
Jerry, the stats from the first half and some halftime thoughts. Yeah, let's look at first of all at OG because I think, you know, shooting has really cooled down for them, especially from the rebounding side of things. 7 of 23 from field goal range, uh, 30%. 6 of 8 from the free throw line. 8 free throws. That's pretty big right now, you know, especially the way the free throws are handled. Um, they uh, really got control of the boards a little bit. Seven rebounds in that quarter, but 15 total rebounds and two turnovers. Uh, Crestview, on the other hand, 8 of 21 for 38% from field goal range. Uh, free throws, they're 6 of 8 for 75%. Turnover, 6. Rebounds, uh, 11. Uh, defensive, 2. Offensive for 13 bounds. Real quick, I'll just say on the, I, I think I give a lot of credit right now to Crestview on the defensive side. And not from steals, just from slowing the game down. And if I were a coach on the other side, I'd be going crazy, but not being able to show it. You know, because you've lulled them to sleep a little bit. Yeah, great point, Coach Gant, you're right. He, he, he's going to take away some things from this game that, that they're going to use as teaching points, whether they win or lose, just about how to execute a little bit better in the half-court offense. They've just steamrolled some teams uh, here in the early season. And again, this is a good, good piece of uh, – uh, getting into this game against the Knights and, and being able to execute in the half court. I want to thank our stat men for the stats for us. Not official, but they do a great job, Brad Hughes and Steve Richardson. And here we go, second half, Crestview with the basketball, running a set where they get Gregory isolated down on the block. She's going to go with the shot off the window. Doesn't get it. Nice defense again by Carson Erford against um, Gregory, Cali style. And there's a turnover and a reach in. That's against Katie Kaufman, and that's her third foul, and that's a big foul that here is big. early in the third quarter against Kaufman. Uh, you know, you saw there, too, I think that was a focus at halftime. Let's get the ball. Let's get out and go. I think they just, you know, you do that, but sometimes you can do it too fast too soon, and, you know, put the ball. Uh, pass was not that clear, uh, good going into the inside that time. Crestview with the basketball. Casey Gregory looking to get it into Etzler, unable to do so. Allie Klein, the leading scorer for the Lady Knights in the first half with eight points, passes it over to Josie Kawicki. Carson Erford had nine points for OG to lead the Lady Titans. Josie Kawicki with a shot, steps into it, unable to come away with the bucket. Nice rebound there by uh, Katie Kaufman. Here come the Lady Titans. Brinkman with the wide open look, in and out. Callie Gregory with the ball. She's probing. Kicks it over to her sister, Casey. Casey, nice Callie pass. Klein. Great execution. That's what Dr. Nate Smith wanted to see when he invented this game. That's exactly right. Nice transition basketball by the Lady Knights. Give Klein the bucket. Her ninth and ten point. Another wide open look there for the Lady Titans in number 24, Micah Aldridge. And there's a foul on the rebound. Maya Etzler had the ball, and she got pushed by Carly Brinkman. Brinkman picks up her third foul. So foul's a storyline here again early in the third quarter. And Coach Yance got to bring Brinkman off the floor. He can go deep. So Savannah Wrecker in the game now. And you know something? That's something we didn't, I didn't mention. We didn't mention early. The depth of OG. And that could really play very critical, you know, in a close game like this. Definitely in a close game, but with the tempo being a little bit more slow pace, it works to Crestview's advantage. But there's a shot and a nice defensive rebound by Caitlin Kimmett. Here come the Lady Titans. Kaufman back out, inside out action. Kimmett unable to connect with the three. Maya Etzler with the board. Lady Knights in transition. Nice recovery Boy, great, there. Re great defense of seeing the ball. Savannah Racker. There's Kaufman with the bucket. Nice touch. Katie Kaufman picks up the first field goal for the Lady Titans here in the third quarter. Her third field goal overall, she's got one from the free throw line for a total of seven. And it's good to see her. She brought the ball down the floor a couple times, you know, in this half so far. And handling the ball well, stop, you know, took a nice jump shot there. Yeah, great observation. There, she's brought the ball down a couple times. I'm like, that's the 6-1 girl dribbling the ball down the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. Crestview with the sideline out of bounds, going to look for a flare screen and a baseline. They go with the fair flare screen to Josie Kowicki. She looks inside for Epsler, does get it into her. Maya guarded by Kaufman. Ellie Klein looking to attack, can't get anything there. In with the trees. Here comes 
OG in transition. And Savannah Wrecker with the travel. That's where you teach that jump stop over and over. And she knows what to do. Just unfortunately, that time, that, call for the violation. And, and that possession told me a ton about Callie Gregory. You know, she played, she was three on one. And she created that turnover on a three-on-one. And with the turnover, as you said, that Gregory was able to pull off. Coach Gregory's going to call timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Third quarter action, OG Crestview on WOSN. Crestview takes the timeout and... Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Dave Bowen, and Coach, what was the purpose of that T.O. for Coach Gregory? Well, he, he was pretty vocal during it, and I think he just was a little upset about how quick they were putting the ball up. You know, listen, we're in control of this right now. Let's stay in control of it. Don't just force the thing up. They get the ball into Callie Gregory, who passes to Maya Etzler. She goes off window in front of the basket. Nicely done by Maya Etzler. Give the assist to Callie Gregory. Etzler now with six points. Shot that, at the other end. You know, that's the other thing, too, coming out of that timeout. You really see good coaching when, again, coming out of that, you've got a sideline out of bounds that they scored on. Set that up. That's the last thing. They did that in a 30-second timeout. Couldn't agree more with you. A sideline out of bounds, the slob, as you mentioned it earlier, and Crescent is able to execute. They have the ball in the half court. Callie Gregory with the ball. Wants to get her teammate, my answer on the block. She looks to go up and under. Goes with another move. Unable to come up with a good defense by the Lady Titans. Limit the Knights to one shot. And OG looks to go transition. Crestview recovers, but I like how Micah Aldrich pushed that ball down the floor. Fight pressure with pressure. Both teams looking for the shots early, but doing a great job. Doing a great job of making great decisions in transition. I thought so too, yes. Burford with the shot, comes up empty. Offensive rebound. Yep, she was out of bounds. Stepped by out Savannah of bounds. Recker, but you're right, Coach. She stepped on the end line. Crestview's going to get the basketball. I have to say something. I really like uh, the shot, the form of Carson, Carson Erford. And I learned something at halftime I didn't know. Uh, Kevin McLaughlin's granddaughter. Yep, Kevin McLaughlin, longtime coach at Miller City, now a varsity assistant for his son, Tyson, at Ottawa Glendorf. There's Crestview with the basketball, Klein with the penetration, Klein with the, or excuse me, Kreider with the shot, but Erford, Johnny on the spot, with the block, and she brings it across the timeline. There's another deep look, doesn't go, but OG gets the offensive rebound, the back cut doesn't go. Here come the Lady Knights, Ellie Klein in transition. Great hustle again by Savannah Record to knock that ball away. Crestfield maintained possession, but they didn't get a shot. Yep. You know, um, I'd, I'd be remiss right now as we have a few subs coming in. You know, one of the things I love about coming, you know, Crestview, Ottawa Glendorf, the community support. And, you know, I'd be remiss also, I, I say this all the time, that if I didn't mention the great job by the athletic director and the athlete, and the athletic trainer here. Yeah, Austin. Yep. Um, Austin, Austin Fleming, the Austin athletic Fleming, director, yes. and Micah Johns, yep. the trainer. Austin in his second year as the athletic director at Crestview, doing an outstanding job. Yep, he's not on spring break. No. <laughs> or Christmas break, <laughs> yeah, I should say. no way. Ellie Klein, we saw it in the first half. She does it again, penetrates, and gets to the backboard, kisses it off the window. Crestview, they push the lead to five. That's the biggest lead pretty much by either team so far in this game. Or OG might have been up 7-2 to two at the onset, but it's been nip and tuck. But Crestview with the foul. That is on Maya Esler, her second, team's first. And if they're not getting, you know, the break, you know, and shots off of the break, I think that's something you're going to see a little bit more of them just methodically, the Titans, that is, you know, of, of them just methodically on the offensive end, trying to get the ball back inside. They're going to the free throw line for two. And, you know, whittle that, you know, it, it's only right now a four-point deficit. But at the same time, in, in this pace of a game right now, four is a lot. Four is a lot. Olivia Grothaus cuts it to three, though, making both free throws on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. 28-25, Lady Knights on the Carriott scoreboard. 
Haley McCoy up fakes, goes to the rim, but there's Brinkman, gets a hand on it, and creates a deflection, and we're going to get a jump ball. Again, Carly Brinkman, again. she just seems to be yes. around the action. McCoy had an uncontested layup, and Brinkman gets a hand in there on the last dribble, knocks it away. The held ball creates a turnover against the Lady Knights, and OG with the basketball. A three will tie it. Carly had a career high 16 not too long ago against Fairview. And there she is again with a nice back cut, but unable to convert. And that's what you see again from OG. They do. We, we lose the ball in the rebound, but we're not going to just quit on it. We're going to look to get a steal on the pass from the post player or knock the ball out of their hands. They're so good at that. Yes, they are. Crestview's been able to handle it for the most part tonight, but just in this kind of game, one time where it works can make a huge difference. There's a loose ball that OG comes up with, but Callie Gregory steals it. Turnover to turnover. She spins, gets to the rim, and scores it. Wow. Callie Gregory, Callie Gregory picks up her ninth point, eighth and ninth point of the contest. Burford with the basketball on the right wing. Probing. There's Grothaus looking to attack. No con, or a lot of contact, no call. Nice defense by the Lady Knights, but Caitlin Kimmett would not be denied as she goes up and under. I love it when post players use their feet to effectively attack the rim and draw contact. And you know, that was, that was very tough to defend because every passing lane was taken. She had no choice but to go, and defensively, you know, held her own and everything, but just, as you say, you know, up and under, and, you know, she, she did a good job of drawing the foul. Caitlin Kimmett on the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. The foul was charged to Ellie Klein. That's her first. Crespi second in the quarter. Kimmett a chance to get her second point of the game from the charity strike. Does so. Uh, the 78% free throw shooter gets it done. Again, Crespi with a three-point lead. Callie Gregory brings it across the timeline. Kimmett's averaging eight a game, and you know, she's well under that right now, but, you know, we've got a ways to go yet. Got a ways to go, but uh, I thought as I looked at the scores of both teams, uh, both teams, Crespi has not given up 40 points in the game, and um, OG has only yeah. given up 40 twice. So I thought it might turn into a defensive display it has. And right there, we have an illegal screen on Casey Gregory. That's her third personal. She's going to come out of the contest. Kennedy Kreider back in. Both teams being very competitive, working extremely hard, as you said earlier. Oh, we're seeing a zone here, I think. Uh, and it's that, a triangle. No, 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 no. It's You're a right. triangle. We You're said right, Coach is. Gregory, he, he's going to play man-to-man -man predominantly, yep. but he'd mix it up, showing some triangle and two action, and they get the missed shot yep, from Brinkman. That's what it is. Callie Gregory looking to attack. Good help side defense. Draws contact, though. We're going to have two shots from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. That fouls on Caitlin Kimmett. Her second, team's third. And you know this, the tighter defense that the Lady Titans play, the more that's opening up the lane for Callie Gregory. Gregory again off that free throw line. Did you have any former players that shot free throws off the line? Or no, anybody no. that you recall? I'm going to throw a name out. He didn't. He was back from the line, but he shot the jump shot. And that was Steve Pullman. I'm going back a couple of days. Uh, a member of the 1983 Delta St. John's Blue Jay State Championship team. Shot a jump shot from the free throw line. You know, I've seen people do it, and it's only because they were uncomfortable. You know what I mean? It was like their way to do it. Erford with a great interior pass to Brinkman. Give Erford the assist. Brinkman with the bucket. Back to a three-point game. 45 seconds left here in the third quarter. Ellie Klein with the ball out front. 45 seconds, a long time to hold it for one shot, against, especially against the OG defense. There's the pick and roll. Wow. Nicely done as Maya Etzler gets the bucket. 
assist, Callie Gregory down to 25. Grothaus with the basketball for OG, kicks it over to Brinkman. She's wide open. She drills it. Yeah. That's the second three of the game for OG, and they are both by Carly Brinkman. 12 seconds. Callie Gregory with the basketball. Goes to Klein. Brinkman tries to get a steal. Klein, good help side defense. Callie Gregory not going to give it up. Step back three. Doesn't go. And another really good quarter for both teams. Halftime, it was 21 to 22 in favor of Crestview. At the end of the third, Crestview picks up a point and extends the lead to two. 34 to 32 on the carry at scoreboard. We're going to go to the fourth quarter. It's going to be a good one. You're watching it on WOSN. Welcome back to Crestview High School, 34-32, Lady Knights. What do the stats look like from the third quarter, Jerry? Crestview, 5 of 11 in that quarter. You know, 11 shots off, which is pretty good. Hit 2 of 2 from the line, 2 turnovers, 6 rebounds. OG, 2 of 5 from 2, 1 of 5 from 3, 4 of 5 from the line for 80%, and 7 rebounds and 5 turnovers, and I think those were big. Crestview gets the ball to begin the quarter, able to run their set coming out of the timeout. Defended nicely by OG. We have a kick ball. It'll be Crestview basketball out of bounds, under out of bounds set. Crestview has looked so, I think this quarter and this half, they've looked so competent on the offensive end. Callie Gregory looking to do the fake handoff and drive baseline, but defended very nicely by Caitlin Kimmett. Kimmett and Gregory out front. Ellie Klein going against Brinkman. There's a back cut. Casey Gregory, nice job of not standing still. Gregory with the bucket. Klein with the assist. Boy, give Gregory, give Casey Gregory a lot of credit on that for recognizing that let alone the pass. And you know, the back cut, it's a vital part of the game, but so many teams play pack line defense. The, yes. The back cut is not something you practice a whole lot. You just don't see it. Inside out action, and there she is again. Yeah. Carly Brinkman with the third three of the game. The only player on either squad to make a three. And that she, she has three now, cuts the lead to one. They put her in a good spot against that triangle and two. Yeah, an inside out action. Yep. We talk about back in the day when you'd shoot on the driveway, you had a rebounder. The ball's always coming out from under the basket. That's what we saw right there. She got her feet set. Callie Gregory looking to go three ball. Doesn't score, but Maya Etzler with the rebound. Almost had another back door. Yeah. Josie Kawicki down there, but kick ball by the Lady Titans. Good deflection to stop that basket from happening. Ellie Klein will inbound it. Callie Gregory again out front, guarded by Caitlin Kimmett. Kimmett constantly looking to see if a screen's going to come against her. Doesn't right there. Casey Gregory to Ellie Klein. They're looking for that back door again. Maya Etzler at the free throw line. She can hit that shot, but decides not to shoot it there. Nice defense by OG. Erford rotated over to help yes. Kim it out on Callie Gregory. And when she looked to find a teammate, unable to do so. A dead ball turnover. OG with the basketball. And chance to take the lead back. Six minutes remaining in the fourth stanza. It's been punch, counter punch. Exactly what we thought we would see. And got to go back to that boys' state tournament, 1923. 23. Yep. As Carson Erford attacks the rack, bodies flying, and she scores. OG back with the lead by one. Ellie Klein from three. Overcooks it. Brinkman with the rebound. I don't think that's a shot they wanted. Early know? in the possession, you're right. Kaufman to wide open look for Kimmett. And here comes Crestview. They get the board. Callie Gregory. Will she give it up? I don't think so. Attacks. Makes them make a call. It's a block. Callie Gregory with the hoop and a chance to get a three-point play the old-fashioned way. 
You know, you mentioned, what year was it that the Boys State Tournament? 1923. 1923. Just like you, I was 9 or 10 year old. <laughs> Do you want to know when Dr. Naismith invented the game? Were you there? That yeah, was 1891. Yeah. Yeah. And we, yeah, we just, he just had his birthday, I think, not long ago. Well, the first basketball game was December 21st, yeah. 1891. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Naismith. Callie Gregory at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. She makes good on the three-point play the old-fashioned way, and we're going to have Coach Gregory call a timeout. We'll take one as well. 519 to go, 39-37, Lady Knights over the Lady Titans here on WOSA. Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. It's been Carson Erford for OG, but yet Carly Brinkman has been the nice sidekick hitting three threes. Crestview, Ellie Klein, and Callie Gregory, but again, both teams, the role players have stepped up to do what they need to do to make this game as competitive yes, they as it have. can be. I, this, is a, this was a good timeout. You know, I think you're going to see both teams coming out and, you know, we're at a critical stretch of the game right now and, you know, how do you answer what you do different? I wonder if uh, Crestview will get out of that uh, Exactly, get out of the triangle, two. yes. And it looks like they are. They're yep. back there man-to-man. -man. Straight man-to-man. -man. Brinkman made him pay. Erford with the basketball. Kicks it over to Kaufman. She gets to the rim. Maya Etzler just enough to distract it, but unable to get the rebound straight up on Erford. They're battling. Another offensive rebound. That's what we saw in the early going. It stemmed the tide, Crestview did, but right there, a flurry of offensive boards yeah. for the Lady Titans. And, you know, any coach will tell you that offensive rebounds will kill you, you know, on, on the score. And that's, that's right now, that obviously, has been a big strength of theirs all along. Maya Etzler picks up her third personal. And Katie Kaufman goes to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Makes good on the first one. Toes, throws. Nicely done. Nails both of them. She's three for four in this game from the charity stripe. And when you have tight games, it comes down to free throw shooting. And she does a nice job there on, again, the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Crestview in the half court. Casey Gregory at the point. Kicks it to her sister, Callie, on the left. Josie Kowicki with the screen on Callie Gregory. Thought about the three, doesn't shoot it. Lady Knight's going to reset again. Casey Gregory with the ball out top. Guarded by Kimmick. And that's why patience to get a good shot here is so critical My for the Lady Knights. Looking to attack. She goes up on the baseline. Guarded nicely by Kaufman. Lady Titans attacking. Erford going coast to coast. Left wow. hand up wow. and in. Just would not be denied on that drive. She's just kind of taken over on the offensive end. 13 2 a game she's averaging. OG up to halfway through the last, the final fourth stanza. Ellie Klein, she says, I'll attack as well. Unable to come up with the bucket. Got to be able to turn that corner. That's a tough shot from the side. Here comes Erford again. Gets to the middle. Kicks it to Grothaus. Thinks about the shot. And then it goes out of bounds. Going to stay with OG. Crestview able to, again, recover defensively. Grothaus looked like she might have a look, but unable to get the shot off. I think this is a huge possession that the Knights have to stop OG on this possession. Grothausen with the basketball. There's the curl cut, but Maya Etzler steps in front. Josie Kowicki does a nice job of reeling that one in. Didn't expect it. Casey Gregory with the basketball now out front. Franklin overplays. They go inside to Callie Gregory. She's double teamed. Ellie Klein on the give and go. Nicely done, Gregory Cali style with the assist. Give the bucket to Ellie Klein. She has 14 in the game now. Tied up at 41. 
Erford sets the table for the Lady Titans. Kaufman with the screen. Kaufman with the basketball. Up fakes, goes to the rim, and she scores. Good, strong move without uh, creating an offensive foul. Yeah, Josie Kawicki tried to get in position, but Kaufman does a nice job, as you said, avoiding the foul. Coach Gregory is going to take another timeout with OGF2. We'll take one as well. 43-41 on the carry-up scoreboard. You're watching it all on WOSN. in favor of the Ottawa Clandorf Lady Titans here at Crestview High School. 2.35 left to play. It's been an outstanding basketball game. The coaches are starting to use their timeouts here in the fourth quarter. The chess match between coaches. It's occurring between Mark Gregory and Troy Yant. Jerry, just a real exciting game, and now it's going to come down to execution. Yes, and you know, Coach Gregory was really diagramming something that he wanted next time uh, on their on on their offensive end right now, he's really he really died. I don't think it was a sideline out of bounds, but I think it was what he wanted in the half court once they inbounded. it. Okay, we'll see what they get. They go right into my answer. Uh -huh. Give and go again. Callie Gregory gets to the window. Well, I take that back. I think that is what he wanted. <laughs> yeah, Callie Gregory with the bucket. My answer with the assist. Callie picks up her 15th and 16th point of the game. My answer staying away from Kaufman, daring her to shoot the three. Erford with the basketball, 2-12. She's the floor general out there with the left hand down the lane, trying to make something happen. And they do get a block call as she attacks the basket. Good things happen when you attack the rim. Erford going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. One side you're happy with the attack, the other side you're thinking, yeah. well, maybe they bailed her out a little bit. But again, put the pressure on the official to make the call. He did not hesitate on that. He either. did not. You know, that was his call from where, uh, from his angle. And Josie Kawicki picks up her third foul. Erford on the free throw line picks up point number 14. Again, on the Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throw line. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe, chicken home style, happens here. She goes two for two. She's an 80, and I mentioned she's an 80% shooter on the year from the free throw line, so get her to the line. Carson has 15 points in the game now. OG up two. Crestview reversing the basketball. There's the curl, there's the curl. Callie Gregory out top, spinning into the paint. Off one foot, hits window, doesn't pick up rim. Erford with the basketball. She's going to go coast to coast, kicks it to her teammate. And then OG back out front. Kaufman, she looks to attack against Maya Edsler. And she's going to be fouled. And right now, OG just being aggressive offensively. We said free throws were going to come into play, and we're seeing it right now. He's going to call that on the floor. As that foul is on Ellie Klein, her second. So it'll be under out of bounds for OG. And that was a good decision that time by OG. You know, a couple open shots, but no, let's get a better one with a minute and a half left. And under, the lead. Yep, under out of bounds set. Erford with the basketball. It's going to be in her hands a majority of yes, the time. Yes, it is. Brinkman with the basketball now on the left wing. Kaufman with the screen out high. Brinkman looking to attack. Nothing there. Crestview playing stingy defense. Well-coached teams, when they catch the basketball, they put it in low ball position automatically. Both teams do that here for these two programs. And there's a foul on Casey Gregory. That's her fourth. Well, I mentioned earlier, free throws, the foul situation wasn't critical. It didn't play into it. That's the fourth foul on Crestview. And Coach Yan, yeah, he's going to call a timeout. So the chess match continues. We're going to keep it right here. Again, the last game for OG, they defeated Napoleon 53-16. Crestview beat Kaleida 42-37. Upcoming games, OG, Fort Laramie on Saturday at home. Crestview, they're off until next Thursday night when they play Columbus Grove, returning to league action. Well, in this timeout right now, I'm 
pretty certain he's going to say, you know, make them foul us. You know, we've got the ball. We're ahead. Make them send us to the line. We're going to the uh, two shots next time we're at the line. And this is where defensively, you, do we trap? Do we stay strong man to man, try and get a deflection? Those are decisions that you like having the ball in this situation when you have a solid program, and both of these teams are in that boat, yeah. as you've mentioned earlier. And uh, Well, too, when you need the basketball, if you are standing your man-to-man -man without trapping, you're tightening up a lot, and that really does open up the inside for easy shots. The fouls are 4-1, to one. Crestview with 4, OG with 1. So OG is going to go to the line and shoot free throws on the next foul, regardless of whether it's a shooting foul or not. OG with the sideline out of bounds. Carson Erford with the rock. Ellie Klein defending. Try and get a five second call. Brinkman with the basketball. She goes over to Micah Aldrich. And there's your foul. There's your two, yeah. Micah Aldrich going to go to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Free Throw Line. The foul is on Josie Kawicki. That's her fourth. She's 5 of 11 for the line on the year. Just so hasn't shot many. Yeah, and there's and a miss. You know, they knew in that timeout who they were going to foul. And I don't mean that in a pressure situation on that young lady. But, you know, you look at statistics. It's data-driven. Aldrich with the second free throw. Misses that one as well. Callie Gregory gets it to Ellie Klein. Big possession for the Lady Knights. Could have been an illegal screen, no call. Maya Etzler with the basketball. Over to Casey Gregory. Looking inside, nothing there. Coach Gregory has timeouts. Doesn't use them, but we have a kick. And Crestview maintains possession. Good penetration. Yeah, it was. You know, you, you talked about that screen where that could have been a foul, and you're seeing that called a lot more, too. Yeah, even when the defender is set, and, yep. and sometimes I feel bad for the defender, they just caught him on the edge. Callie Gregory stops and pops, and she scores, picks up her 17th and 18th point. We're tied up with 35 seconds. That always shows, you know, I don't know statistically what it is, but coaches do keep statistics on they're scoring from baseline out of bounds and sideline out of bounds. There's a foul up front as Erford went away from the screen and went back into Ellie Klein. So she's going to go to the free throw line. Erford at the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And Ellie Klein picks up her third personal. And Coach Gregory's asking the official what she's supposed to do. Herford makes the first one. That's 16 for her in the game thus far. The leading score for the Lady Titans tonight. And overall, three above her season average of 13 a game. Big one here to put the Lady Titans up two. She misses it, but there is Kaufman with the rebound. And now the Knight, Lady Knights have to foul right away. But they aren't. They're trying to, yeah. but they got to get her, got to get her. There they get Brinkman with the foul. Brinkman a 77% yeah. free throw and, and shooter. And you know what? It was a long rebound. It was a long I mean, rebound. It, it wasn't out of, you know, people yelling, you know, got a rebound, Ooh, yeah. got a rebound. Well, that's just a unfortunate for uh, Crestview, a long, long miss. Carly Brinkman at the line shooting two. She has three threes in the game and a deuce. No free throws. That's, that's the, the first one she shot tonight. So she can only extend the lead to two with a make. And Crestview had 12.9. Will Coach Gregory let it play out or look to use the timeout? I think he'll take the timeout. All right, so Carly Brinkman with the second one. She drills that one, nothing but cotton. And Coach Yant's yep. going to call timeout. That'll be OG's third timeout of the game. We'll take one as well. Two-point game, OG, 12.9 on the Carriott scoreboard. You're watching it all on WOSN. Stop by the Carriott in Ottawa for great food and great friends. Good luck, Lady Titans, from the Belmont, Belmonts. They are our scoreboard sponsor. 
defensively, what you going to do? Going to extend full court here if you're coaching it? You're going to back off? What are you going to do? Well, I coach? think they are going to extend because they're not in a foul situation. So they've got four to burn. Absolutely great Three call. to burn. Three to burn before there's a free throw. They can really make this last 12.9 be really, really choppy and be aggressive. Maybe they can get a steal without the foul. Callie Gregory, there's yeah. the reach. Took a second or so off of it, a little more than a second. Caitlin Kimmett picks up her third personal. You just don't want to foul when the opponent is in the act of shooting right, right now. Yeah. But they have two to give. Callie Gregory, she's got it, looking to attack. And Coach Mark Gregory's going to call a timeout. That's his fourth timeout. He'll have one left. And that's really to um, Crestview's advantage right now. Got the ball over the midcourt line. You know, now you've got a sideline out of bounds that you're going to take it from. And he just asked him where they were taking it from. So it's going to be right in front of the uh, Crestview bench. But here's the situation, Coach. OG still has two exactly fouls Exactly right. Give. You got to foul on the dribble, though. Yep. You don't want to foul in the act of shooting, especially if it's a three. But I think you looked at foul right away on the catch and just keep chopping this game up right now because you have those two fouls to give. And I think you are go you're also going to see Crestview, if there is a whistle, you know, on a foul, no matter where it's at, they're going to try to shoot it. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, they may not mm -hmm. get to the line on it, but they're going to try to shoot it. So we're going to go sideline out of bounds. Just been a whale of a basketball game. It's lived up to the billing. We said a late Christmas gift. Uh, you know where it's coming back to. <laughs> yeah, with Callie She's Gregory taking the ball taking out of bounds, bounds, but you know it's coming back to her. Here goes, we go. Looking at that give and go play. There's contact, and we do get a body foul. But it's going to be out of bounds. So we have 4.1 left now. Timeout. And that is the fifth foul on Carly Brinkman. She's had a whale of a game. Yes. And Coach Gregory is going to take his last time out. Carly Brinkman again, three threes, a two, and a free throw. She's always just been around the action throughout the contest. Now, where that foul occurred, I thought it was at the free throw line. I thought by rule that would go under out of bounds. Yes, it is. Okay. But where they're holding the ball right now, usually you have the official with the basketball where it's going to be out of bounds. Looks like it might be on the side, but I really thought that contact occurred at the free throw line. You have a line going from the corner down at the baseline to the elbow, around the three point of the top of the key to the elbow to the corner and anything in there, the ball's to go under out of bounds. Yeah. That's another rule this game, if I yeah. get it in real quick, uh, for fouls no, and side. violations, it's either at the 28-foot mark or yes. under out of bounds. So they're going to give it to Crestview on the side, and they still have a foul to give to the Lady Titans. And now Coach they wanted to see that They wanted to see what now. was set up. I tried to pull a Michigan to see what uh, Coach Gregory was, was drawing up there, but I couldn't quite make it out <laughs> on the board. <laughs> Well, we're going to take a break as well real quick. We'll come right back. 4.1, 47.45. It's on WOSN. Welcome back to the Ray Etzler Gymnasium. 4.1 seconds, Crestview sideline out of bounds. OG with a foul to give. OG up, 47-45. Jerry Snodgrass, Dave Bowen. Changed Kate, it up a little bit this time. Still going out of a box set with Casey Gregory taking the ball out on the side. And remember, they still have a foul to give. Uh-huh. Callie Gregory gets it. Looks to attack. It's going to be short. That's going to be your ball game. Callie Gregory tried to get to the right side, but you got to give the OG yeah, defense a tremendous amount of uh, credit. Great defense. They put a wall up. OG yep. comes away with our victory, 47 to 45. We'll come back with some final thoughts and statistics. Non-conference action. OG 47, Crestview 45 on WOSA. Welcome back to 
Crestview High School in the Ray Epsler Gymnasium, where tonight the Ottawa Glendorf Lady Titans come away with a hard fought 47 45 victory over the Crestview Lady Knights. They come from behind with a 15 point fourth quarter compared to 11 points for the Lady Knights. And Jerry Snodgrass and Dave Bowen on the call. Coach, Tell us about the statistics a little bit and how things played out here with the totals. Let's look at OG first. You know, 14 of 42 for 33 percent. Not their normal shooting, I think, from you know from two point range, but they were 33 percent from the three point line too. I think the big thing for them, they were 17 of 23. They hit their free throws, and I think really that was the end of the game or the tell of the game. 25 rebounds and only seven turnovers. And I think against, I, I, because I thought Crestview played such good defense, and that's a credit to OG for handling the ball well. For Crestview, 18 of 43 for 43% from field goal. Big stat here, especially early in the first half, 0 for 6 from three-point line. They tried a few, but just did not hit. 9 of 11 from three free throw line. 10 turnovers, and again, that's good considering the pressure they were under. 21 total rebounds, and they really bounced back from that being out-rebounded so much early on. A great game between two outstanding programs. Both coaches can take things away from this to grow from. With the win, Ottawa Glendorf improves to 10-0. and Crestview drops to 9-1. and Statistically, as you said, I think Crestview being 0 for 6 from 3, and then only shooting 9 free throws overall to 17 by OG really played a crucial part in the game as a whole, and especially in that fourth quarter right. when OG outscored Crestview 15 to 11. And you know another interesting aspect of this, with 12.9 seconds left, Crestview had the ball. The timeout situation that OG had, they were, and, and, they had four timeouts going into the fourth quarter, and they had fouls to get. They had four fouls to get going into the fourth quarter, going down that stretch. So they were able to use the timeouts and use the fouls to really disrupt. And you saw the final shot that uh, Crestview got off, and it wasn't any fault of Crestview. It was just, you know, they had to switch what they were doing. And again, give that that's coaching. That's yeah. good coaching. Yeah, yeah. 12.9 seconds, uh, Coach Gant chopped the game up a little bit, and as a result, Crestview was unable to get a good look. Credit the OG defense on that final play. They put a wall up. Callie Gregory very challenged to get a good look. She was able to get the ball up to the basket, but it didn't go in. OG comes away with the win. Now for Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Dave Bowen. Megan Sherrick, she's been our camera person, and she's going to take this back and edit it. It's been a pleasure bringing this game to you. And until next time, may all of your jumpers hit nothing but the bottom of the net. So long, everybody, and Happy New Year.